and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A10C and we're looking at our basic INS navigation. So the A10C itself has four types of navigation. It has INS, inertial navigation system. It has TACAN, tactical air navigation. It has ILS, instrument landing system. And it has radio homing. Now today we're looking at INS, inertial navigation system. So this is a gyro based system. It's actually, the whole system is within the plane. It's completely passive. It doesn't reach out anywhere and try to communicate with everything. And therefore we can program everything we need from in the cockpit now today what we're going to do is we're going to do keep everything simple first of all there are loads of different ways of doing this and there are loads of ways to expand on what we're doing today but we're just going to keep a simple overview of INS navigation so we're here at this airbase here in our A10Cs we want to navigate to these bad guys here but for reasons that you can make up yourselves we want to navigate by a certain route we first want to navigate to this little lake thing here then we're going to navigate to this road junction here and then on our third point we're going to be get to the bad guys here and these points that we're talking about are waypoints so it's a waypoint based INS system well we're going to add these different waypoints in different ways waypoint one we're going to add here in the mission editor just to show you that this is how one way we can do it uh, I'm going to click add and I'm going to click there that's waypoint one going there we need to give it an altitude because these are three dimensional waypoints in the A10 unlike some other planes and I'm going to make it uh, 1000 feet ASL so that's that one waypoint there. The second waypoint, which we're going to put here, we're going to implement via our TAD, our Tactical Awareness Display. This is going to be on one of the MFDs within the A10 cockpit. And the third waypoint is going to be where these bad guys are, because we're going to put some bombs on them or whatever. And that we're going to put in via the CDU, the Control Display Unit. And we're going to enter the coordinates for this waypoint here in kind of northing and easting, which we'll get from the F10 map. So we're going to show three different ways that we can do it. So we've done everything we can do here. Next, we're going to jump into our cockpits. So just a reminder, we've got waypoint one already set up on the mission editor. We've got our HUD in nav mode here, and there's some things we can see already. We can see we've got waypoint one here and selected. Here is the name as of waypoint one. Here is the distance of waypoint one from us to it, and that's direct to steer. And here is the times uh, when we will reach waypoint one, which is not accurate at the moment because we're not moving. We will go through this in a bit, but out of interest, we've got some guidance information here. We've got our relative angle to waypoint one here and, and our distance to waypoint one again there. Next thing we want to do is to create waypoint two, which we're going to do from the TAD by creating a mark point, then converting that mark point into waypoint two. So the first thing is to set our MFDs up. Left MFD, we're going to set as TAD, Tactical Awareness Display. The right MFD, we're going to set as CDU, Control Display Unit. Well, that's actually the Control Display Unit repeater page. The actual CDU is down there. So this is just repeating what's in the CDU there, but we'll go through that in a bit. Next, we are going to go back to the TAD. First thing we need to do is make this our center of interest. We can only control one center at a time, be it that or that or that. So we're going to make this center of interest by pressing and holding coolly left until we get a box around it. And you see we've got a box around it there. Next, we want to zoom out with DMS aft. That's D for delta. And DMS aft again to zoom out a bit further. And we can see everything we need to see here and zoom in a bit. So what we can see is that's us there. That's waypoint zero, if you like, just our starting point. That's waypoint one there. It's currently our speed, or as I call it, the wedding cake here. And that's what we've got selected as our next steering point, our point of interest. The next thing we want to do is create waypoint two. If you remember, it's at the junction where this road meets this road here. And I want to create it there. And I'm going to designate it from here using, and I'm sorry, I forgot to show you this earlier. So we'll go back in. These chaps here, HOTAS SLU horizontal and vertical. That's what we're going to use to control this. Okay. So I'm going to use those axes here. I'm going to move our designated cross over to that junction. Okay, I'm just going to get it a bit more accurate. I'm now going to tap TMS, Tango, TMS right. And we've created from that mark point A. Now there are several ways of doing the next thing, but I'm going to show you the way that we do it and the way that we consider probably the best way of doing it. What we need to do now is convert mark point A to waypoint two. So we're going to go to our CDU here. So just to explain the CDU, this here is the CDU. This here is the CDU repeater page. So we can operate the CDU either directly from the CDU panel or from the CDU repeater page in conjunction with our UFC, our upfront control. So for waypoint two, we're going to use the CDU here. For waypoint three, just for variety, we're going to use the repeater page here and the UFC here. So 
Let's see what we've got. Uh, sorry about the kind of skewed angle. It's just because my track IR is not very good. Yeah, you'll get used to it. Before we do anything else, we will need to go from flight plan to mission. So now we're selected to mission, we can have a look at our CDU page. What we've got here, importantly, is mark point A selected, which is the mark point that we've set on the tab. Now we're going to type in some information. First of all, it wants to have a name for this waypoint, and we can call it whatever we want, but we're going to call it waypoint 2. So I'm going to type in W... Uh, P2 so you can see WP2 there and then we're going to click on mark point A here to assign this name to our waypoint that we're creating and this says now WP2 now we're going to press here question mark 2 that is going to apply the information from our mark point A to waypoint 2 a newly created waypoint 2 next thing is we'd like to confirm that so the first thing we'll do is set this the HUD to center of interest or SOI so we're going to press coolie forward shortly so we tapped coolie forward and we've got an asterisk here. That means we've now got this as our soil, our sensor of interest. We can now use DMS forward and aft to change the waypoint. So I'm going to go aft. Uh, sorry, I've got myself lost here. I'm going to go, so I've got waypoint zero there, our initial position. Waypoint one there, which is our one created in the mission editor. Waypoint two there, and MSN002 it's called. That should have really called that waypoint two, but it's not the end of the world. We've got waypoint two there that's our newly created one. So we can now also check this out in the tab. So I'm going to go DMS uh, down to zero, then DMS forward to waypoint one, then DMS forward to waypoint two. So that's our chain of waypoints as created so far. So the next thing we want to do is create our waypoint three, which is where the bad guy units are. And we're going to do this a different way. We're going to do this rather than using the TAD, we're going to enter northing and easting information from the F10 map. So let's go to the F10 map. Here's us, our waypoint one's there, waypoint two is now there, waypoint three wants to be here where these baddies are. So what we're going to do is in the F10, we're going to hover our mouse cursor over the middle of the baddies. Now if we look at the top right screen, we can see the northing and easting information. Now we need this in northing, easting, decimal format work with the A10C. We can do it other ways, this is the way we're going to do it. To change how it's displayed at the top here, we press left, alt and Y, and then move the mouse cursor, and you can see we've now got it in MGRS, we've now got it in northern easting we've now got it in whatever that is i don't understand that and we've now got it in northern easting decimal so it's the decimal that has the dot and the three digits after so i'm now going to write that down quickly and i want the elevation as well now back to our cockpit and we need to type that information in so instead of using the cdu here we're going to use the cdu repeater here and here the reason you get a cdu repeater is because it's just easier to use when you're flying that and that rather than that Okay, so we're going to type our new information in. Now the first thing we're going to do is click question mark 3 here to create our new waypoint 3. So, bosh. Now we're going to type the information in. First of all, we need a name. We're going to call it waypoint 3. So, it's a little bit difficult to use. We have to click letter and then 8, uh, 1, 2, <laughs> V8. Cool. Um, I'm not very good at this, obviously. Letter, 8, twice to get W. Then letter six to get p then don't know why two is there but we'll ignore that three waypoint three and now we're going to click on the name of it here waypoint three next we want the easting i'm just going to check my notes we want two five one eight we just type the digits in we don't type the dot or the degree sign nine eight three and we type on mm, that's northing isn't it yes northing okay and now we want to type the easting in, which is going to have a zero. Remember, this uh, we need a zero in front of the easting. That's the same for all aircraft, as far as I'm aware. So zero, five, five, four, three. If you try and type it in without the zero, it just won't let you type it in. And uh, three, I'm going to put that over easting there. It's automatically given us the elevation of two six two because it knows at that northing and easting that is the ground level. Now, out of interest, I just want to change the elevation to something else, just to show that we can. Um, so I'm going to put that uh, thousand. Um, you wouldn't really do this for an actual target, but and we've got elevation of thousand. So that is now our waypoint three created. So now let's do our little trick of cycling through the different ones. So we've got star on HUD. So HUD is already soy. We're going to cycle DMS up and down. Remember, so we've got zero, one, two, and three. The name worked correctly. Uh, for that one, it didn't work correctly for two. It's probably something I did wrong. It's really not that important. So I'm going to go back to waypoint zero. Now we're going to cycle through them on the tad just to make sure everything looks okay as a sanity check. It's got zero, waypoint zero, waypoint one, 
waypoint 2, and waypoint 3. That's where the bad guys are. Right, okay, so before we take off, there's just one thing I want to show, um, is that when we are flying around this sequence of waypoints, we can change it so that it either does update to the next waypoint when we've reached our current waypoint, or we can change it so that it doesn't, so that you have to switch to the next waypoint manually. So, to do that, we've got the CDU repeater here. We're going to click function 5 for flight plan. And we've got our active flight plan here, flight plan 1, named MSN. We've currently got it auto so that it changes between uh, updates waypoints automatically. If we click there, we can go to manual. And so that's the thing. Now, just bear in mind that waypoint 2 and 3 that we've added, we haven't actually added them to the flight plan. So this might not actually work, this auto manual thing, in this example. We're not going to cover flight plans in this video. We're going to cover it in another video. So just bear in mind that is a thing, but I just wanted to show that anyway. We're going to get in the air, get on our way to waypoint 1 and report back. Okay, so the first thing to point out is that we've got waypoint 1 selected here, as we can see here. And we've got this little chap, this little line from our path vector showing how to get to that waypoint. It says to turn right. And this will work in whichever mode we're on. So if I press my master mode change button, and I can see we're in guns. We've still got that tick. I know it's hard to see, but there it is. We're in CCIP, we're in CCRP, or we're in nav mode. It works whichever mode. The next thing to show is that we got this chap, we had a little look at him earlier. This is representing the actual waypoint, waypoint 1, in a three dimensions. That's the distance to it in nautical miles, that's the offset angle to it. So it's 30 degrees to the right. And what we're going to do is follow that and put it in our path vector, which is this chap here, to fly directly to it. Okay, there it is. And you can see the waypoint has this tail which follows our path vector, telling us which way to go. Other than that, we've got some information here at the bottom. We've got the waypoint uh, number there, the waypoint name there. We've got the distance from us to it, direct to steer point, because it's a, it's a steer point. We've got the time to get to it, so 43 seconds and counting down there. And we've got our actual current time there. So let's just get to this waypoint. It'll be a little interesting to see if it auto-updates, I think it will, to the next waypoint. Notice how the waypoint has an altitude. It's 1,000 feet in the air. And we're going to cross it now, 0.3 miles. Pass it, and it has not changed automatically to the next one, so we're going to have to change the waypoint to manually. And remember, as long as our HUD is soy with this cross here, we use DMS up and down to cycle. So DMS up one sets us on to waypoint two, 6.1 miles, and one minute and nine seconds to get there. Follow the symbology again. And there we go. Now notice how this one's on the ground. This is because we did not give an elevation to this one. This is the one we designated from the TAD. Um, so therefore it defaulted to ground level if we don't give it an elevation. Also notice, I might as well point out, we've got our radar altitude there. So let's speed up and get there. Altitude, altitude. Yes, Betty. And that is waypoint 2 cross. Again, we need to change manually to waypoint 3. So waypoint 3 now we're going to turn to and change to. It is 14 miles away, 2.2 uh, 2 minutes 37 to get there. So we'll speed up a little bit. And we can also track this from our TAD here. You can see here's our plane. There's waypoint 2, there's waypoint 1. And waypoint 3 is just off screen, so I'd need to unzoom that out a little bit, which I'll do now. So soy left, hold. And DMS down, out, and you can see there is waypoint 3 as speed, center point of interest ahead of us. Speed time up. There are the baddie units just below the below the uh, waypoint. Um, remember, we set the elevation to 1,000 feet, so it is 1,000 feet above them. Otherwise, everything else is the same, uh, 3.5 miles away. Now, um, the only caveat I'd like to add about this is that we did not create... A flight plan for these waypoints that we added in if we had created a flight plan we would have got more information we would have got actual track lines running between uh, waypoints one two and three and zero in fact and we would have been able to follow them and get more information from them but that we're going to do in the next video so this is just adding and flying waypoints without creating a flight plan and we'll pass this waypoint here and then we'll sign off and that's it We've added the waypoints as we've said, and we've flown through them, looked at the symbology. Hope that helps. Next, we're going to do a creating flight band video, and I'll see you later.